Welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's February 12th, 2020, and the poem that I'm going to read to you today is by Morris Manning. It's from his new collection called Rail Splitter, and I've read a couple of poems from this collection uh, back in the summer and the spring, but I have yet to read this one, which is one of my favorites in the collection. This is probably my favorite collection of poetry that came out in 2019. If you have not got a copy yet, then I highly recommend you do so. It's uh, very worth reading and rereading. And uh, the poem that I'm going to read today from this collection is called An Old Track in the Woods. This is how it goes. When my melancholy was most profound in younger days, I was tempted sometimes to follow an old track in the woods and cease to be to disappear. I could wander into oblivion, to live and die in the wilderness, as I was accustomed in my youth. Civilization was not my haunt. Mortality meant nothing to me when darker feelings were overwhelming. Why I succumb to such feelings, or nearly so, is a mystery, and remains mysterious after all these years. I've contemplated it, and can offer few conclusions. There's darkness in the world, our common experience. We contend with it, and we ignore it. And that was my experience. You can wander off alone and die, or you can fight that loneliness to do something true for once with your life, or something in life can call you to it, like making a country survive itself and leading your people through certain darkness and leading them even after that. I did what I could, and doubted it. I saw the track, yet turned away. I looked at the wilderness in the woods, and went on going for a town, to reach another human mind. The ambiguity of life, and being alive, that is the mystery, and there's a common rhythm to it. A joy. And joy, or my perception of it, saved me. So in case you are not familiar with this this, uh, collection, the whole collection is written from the um, perspective of a posthumous Abraham Lincoln after he was assassinated by John Wilkes Booth. The whole collection is like that. So it's, it's basically a dead Abraham Lincoln looking back on his life the choices he made, the work that he accomplished, the things that were left unaccomplished, things that he gained and lost. Um, it's a series of, uh, in some ways, reflections on all of, all the things that he lived through and saw. And then it's a, it's, a, it's a mourning for the things that he was not able to see and live through. So I, one of the reasons I like this poem is because we have this ghostly, ostensibly ghostly Abraham Lincoln character who's looking back at his life. And the way he looks back at himself is so similar, is so ghostly in and of itself. He talks about his melancholy self um, who is tempted to follow an old track in the woods and cease to be to disappear, to wander into oblivion. Um, Civilization, he says, is not my haunt. The word haunt there, of course, being... Um, a very purposeful and uh, interesting choice. He says, mortality meant nothing to me when darker feelings were overwhelmingly. And so in the first half of the poem, he's, he's looking back at himself and he describes himself probably not a lot differently than he would describe himself now or uh, as the ghostly figure that he is. And then he says, I don't know why I succumb to such feelings. It's a mystery. And then that mystery comes back at the end. The ambiguity of life and being alive, that is the mystery, he says. And there's a common rhythm to it, a joy. So he says about a third of the way, a little over a third of the way through the poem, why I succumb to such feelings or nearly so is a mystery and remains mysterious after all these years. It remains mysterious even now that he's dead. And that that line there is just, just shy of the middle of the poem. He says there's a darkness in the world, our common experience. And then at the end, again, the ambiguity of life and being alive, that is the mystery. 
and there's a common rhythm to it, a joy. So the joy and the common rhythm are tied together. And it's that common rhythm, he says, and joy or my perception of it saved me. So that common rhythm, which brings us that, that, that notion of commonness, that word common, brings back to the previous line about halfway through, there's darkness in the world, our common experience. So the contending together against the darkness in the world on common ground or standing together as a common experience is what helps save him. You can wander off alone and die, he says, or you can fight the loneliness and you can do something for once with your life. You can lead your people through darkness and then after that, You can do what you can even when you don't think you can do it, even when you doubt it. You can look at the track that takes you into oblivion and you can turn away. And you can reject that that, 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 that wilderness in the woods and go for a town to reach another human mind. This is an interesting poem because it's hopeful but not sentimental. And because it pays off what it suggests earlier in the poem. The, the patterns and the rhythms of the poem, the way that it asks questions and then offers answers, but doesn't offer trite answers and doesn't suggest that these are the only answers. Is a, it's a lovely way to approach a poem and to leave something, to, 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 leave, to leave the reader with some hope, something to think about, something to, to have some joy in, to use the poem's word, but without saying... It's always going to be okay because there's still mystery there. There's still ambiguity. But we all have to share in that ambiguity. It's a common experience. We have to push back against the darkness together. And in that, there's joy. And so at the beginning, we have a melancholy character And at the end, it's a character who has been saved. And of course, the notion of a character having been saved, this dead character uh, looking back and saying, this thing saved me, the notion of of a dead character being saved, is uh, there's some lovely poetic irony in that. So once more, here is an old track in the woods by Morris Manning. When my melancholy was most profound in younger days, I was tempted sometimes to follow an old track in the woods and cease to be, to disappear. I could wander into oblivion, to live and die in the wilderness as I was accustomed in my youth. Civilization was not my haunt. Mortality meant nothing to me when darker feelings were overwhelming. Why I succumbed to such feelings, or nearly so, is a mystery and remains mysterious after all these years. I've contemplated it, and can offer few conclusions. There is darkness in the world, our common experience. We contend with it, and we ignore it. And that was my experience. You can wander off alone and die, or you can fight that loneliness to do something true for once with your life, or something in life can call you to it, like making a country survive itself and leading your people through certain darkness, and leading them even after that. I did what I could, and doubted it. I saw the track yet turned away. I looked at the wilderness in the woods, and went on going for a town, to reach another human mind. The ambiguity of life, and being alive, that is the mystery. And there's a common rhythm to it. A joy. And joy, or my perception of it, saved me. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening. I'll be back uh, tomorrow with another poem for you.